I am sick of seeing garbage websites with garbage writers who will do anything for clicks, period. They will do their damnedest to dig up dirt on people they want out of the industry and fired from their jobs. And while I hate to give them the attention they crave, I also think that it's very important to defend people being attacked by game journalists who we know will be dogpiled by these people's followers. It's important for people to know they shouldn't be bullied into apologizing for their opinions, and it's important to call out the pure hypocrisy of people like the ones writing articles from Kotaku, Fanbyte, Screen Rant, all of these examples that I'm going to be discussing in this video. So I want to start out with a Bounding Into Comics article that sums up the situation. Hogwarts Legacy lead designer Troy Levitt under fire for formerly running an anti-social justice YouTube channel. The discovery that Troy Levitt, a lead designer for the studio in charge of the upcoming Harry Potter game Hogwarts Legacy, used to host an anti-social justice YouTube channel that has led to outrage among the mainstream game press. Now, you would think they'd be upset over recent discoveries, maybe things that this person said recently. No, no. We're talking about examples they're using from years ago. It says Levitt's YouTube channel was first brought to widespread attention by comicbook.com and Unseen64 writer Liam Robertson, who took to his personal Twitter page on February 19th to accuse Levitt of being a far-right YouTuber based on the anti-feminism and pro-Gamergate videos hosted on his channel. Everything with game journalists turns around to be, wow, Gamergate, Gamergate, Gamergate. They hold on to it as tightly as they can. Now, I want to read to you guys a couple of different article headlines, maybe the first one or two paragraphs of some of these articles that these websites are publishing. Fanbyte, of course, did point to one of their articles saying, Lead designer of Hogwarts Legacy used to be an anti-social justice YouTuber. Now, I'd like to point out the last time that Troy Levitt uploaded to his YouTube channel where he put up the content that these journalists are saying is so terrible and offensive two years ago. If we look at some of his videos, 12 script changes to save the last Jedi, black mirror analysis, it's okay to be a gamer is one of the titles of his videos that these people seem to have a big problem with. So the next article that I want to reference is from Screen Rant. Hogwarts Legacy's lead designer has a history of anti-social justice content. Hogwarts Legacy is once again under fire after it has come to light that the game's lead designer has a history of anti-social justice views. All they do all of these journalists is just regurgitate the same information look at Kotaku's Hogwarts Legacy lead designer used to run anti-social justice YouTube channel all of their titles are the same there is no unique evidence in these articles at all they're all just pointing to the same information people if I have to point this out, are allowed to have their own opinions and is clearly don't align with these journalists. So now they're smearing him, saying, look at this terrible person. It is disgusting that they do this constantly, time and time again. His political opinion doesn't affect his ability to do his job. He's obviously talented and is valuable to the industry. So why does it matter if he leans left or if he leans right? Why does it matter if his opinion opinions lean one way or another. He's not pushing his political opinions into the game, he's not attacking people with opinions different than his, and he's not doing anything wrong. Just let the guy help create a video game. So Kotaku's article says Troy Levitt is a lead designer at Warner Brothers development studio Avalanche Software, currently working on controversial Harry Potter game Hogwarts Legacy. This game is only controversial for one single reason. These people do not like J.K. Rowling. That is why they are attacking this game. All these journalists have wanted to do since day one is attack this game because it's Harry Potter and J.K. Rowling was the one that created this franchise. A woman 
woman they hate with a passion, and that's the only reason why they're bringing up someone's videos they posted three whole years ago. They want this project buried, and they want J.K. Rowling to suffer. I'm not defending everything that J.K. Rowling's said or done, but besides it being her creation, She's not writing it or anything. How about these people just let developers do their jobs and create games for franchises people love and care about? This is once again journalists dragging politics into gaming, destroying escapism. Leave your damn politics out of my games. I don't care if you're left or if you're right. These journos just can't leave politics alone. I'll say it again, these are not game journalist sites. They've turned themselves into de facto politicos. But it says uh, he also ran a reactionary YouTube channel focused on attacking feminism and social justice for over a year, three whole years ago. This information was provided by Did You Know Gaming contributor Liam Robertson, who highlighted the channel Friday evening on Twitter. An accompanying screenshot shows a small portion of his YouTube channel with video titles such as The Injustice of Social Justice, In Praise of Cultural Appropriation, and let's go to the tweet that uh, Liam Robertson had actually put out. It says, I know this is just shocking, but the lead designer of Hogwarts Legacy is Troy Levitt, a far-right YouTuber who used to make anti-femme and pro-Gamergate vids. I just want to make something clear. I'm not trying to cancel anyone. I just wanted to let people know this because I feel it's something people might like to know about before deciding whether to support this project. This is all public info and there for anyone to find, and it is true. The YouTube channel is still up. It is still um, active, even though he doesn't use it anymore. He hasn't used it in years. It is still up. But, it says in Levitt's In Defense of John Lasseter video, he discusses how he was personally nice to him when they worked together closely on the Cars 2 video game. Now, I actually wanted to go back to Kotaku's tweet and read to you some of the responses. Now, it has 2.5k likes, but 1.3k retweets and 1.2k comments. There are a lot of people who are very upset with places like Kotaku and Fanbyte for posting articles like this. Melanie Mack had actually said, Literally every single video game studio has people in it with such a huge range of opinions. Stupid or not, I just want to focus on the game themselves and not the people who make them. Unless they're a criminal and need to be in jail, I really don't care. I love this opinion by her. Even if they're sexist, sounds like a personal problem and I really hope they get well soon. Unless that is projected in the game they make, I don't care. Exactly. It says, also, I have no idea who this guy in the article is about, and for all I know, I might think he's an idiot, but if he's not hurting people, I'm not gonna get pressed over an old YouTube channel he had with opinions he may not even align with now. This is so true. People change. We're not talking about videos from a year ago or half a year ago. These are years and years old. He might be a changed person, and even if he's not, it's still his opinion. He's entitled to his opinion, and you should never feel like you have to back down from your opinion. Game journalists these days are honestly so freaking pathetic. The next comments are, Ian's articles are the visual versions of Nails on a Chalkboard. Thanks for the heads up, just subbed and followed, Troy seems like a great guy. This industry is diverse. There are people on the left, people on the right, people who want to stay silent so they don't get canceled like loser journalists like this. It's really disheartening to see that people have to worry about being canceled simply for voicing their opinions years and years ago because people can definitely change, but cancel culture isn't okay and this was an attempt at canceling this person, but I definitely think that it's backfired on all of these, um on all of these websites just because there are so many people now saying, I decided to pick the game up, I've pre-ordered, I've got my money aside, I'm going to be getting the collector's edition, and I'm definitely going to be giving this game a shot. But let everyone know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like, share it, and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you didn't, make sure to give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video video really soon.